Hello and welcome to Auto Experts. I'm your host, Barbara Balfour, and on tonight's show, we'll be talking about spring cleaning for your gut. Basically, how to improve your digestion, add energy to your life, and enjoy better health. Hippocrates, the founder of medicine, once said that the root of all disease lies in the gut. Here to talk to us more about this topic tonight are two special guests who are noted experts in the field. First, we have Holly Warner, who is a board-certified holistic health practitioner who specializes in clinical nutritional therapy and functional diagnostic testing. She specializes in hormone balance, in adrenal health and digestion, among many other topics. And she's the owner of Holly Warner Health and the Wild Carrot. Thanks for joining us tonight, Holly. Next, we have registered holistic nutritionist Darpan Alawalia, aka Total Nutrition Diva. She's the owner of Manatic Natural Market and specializes in a number of issues including fertility, pregnancy, digestive health, and supporting women through menopause. Thanks for joining us tonight, Darpan, and I understand you have a great giveaway for our viewers tonight. Yes, I do. It's for everybody who's watching this today. Um, if you send us an email uh, today uh, or anytime tomorrow, you're able to get a free console, mini 15 minute free consoles with me so we can go through certain issues you might be going through. And what's your email address? It's Darpan. It's Darpan at TotalNutritionDiva.com. So anyone who emails Darpan at TotalNutritionDiva.com gets a free 15 minute consult with you. I think that's a, that's a great giveaway. Um, the first question I wanted to ask you both, the story that I often hear from people who go into functional or holistic medicine is their passion for the field often is, is driven by an inability to find the answers at a personal level, either for themselves or their loved ones. And so I'm curious to hear what, what brought you both to this field. I'd like to hear your story and what, what drew you to pursue a career in this industry. Let's start with you, Holly. About uh, 11 years ago, uh, cancer touched someone close to me and it continued to cycle through many people that I knew, friends and family. And I decided, you know, I got into the women's hormone aspect of things because I thought, you know, there's a, a connection there. I got into cancer prevention and it, it touched me, but it didn't resonate. There was something deeper missing and I kept searching. And then nine years ago, I, I fell into what is, you know, what is it about the hormone connection with this and that? Let's delve a little bit deeper and the nutrition side of things. And then it progressed into studying the microbiome. And I thought, what is the microbiome? Well, that's your gut, your microflora. Uh, okay. Your entire body has a microbiome. Your skin, there's a microbiome. You know, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your intestinal tract, your small and large intestines. They're all your microbiome. Mm. So I got into that, and then I realized there's still another answer. There's something deeper. And I got into adrenal fatigue was the term being used. It's now adrenal dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And as I started to see results from that, I realized all of our systems are connected. And it brought me to where I am today, which is not just looking at treating cancer, but preventing all disease at a cellular level. And when you look at your adrenals, you look at your thyroid, you look at your gut health, you're a whole package. You look at the whole body. Mm -hmm. You fix everything. Send it all a little love and light. Throw in some science, and off you go. Yeah, yeah and I like I that. Am. What about you, Darpan? Very similar to Holly, actually. Uh, but I actually came to Canada to study pharmacology. Okay. So I uh, always wanted to do something to help with people uh, in the health uh, industry. And while I was doing my co-op, I just found that it wasn't the right field. Again, I didn't have the right feeling. Just like you didn't feel it was the right thing for mm -hmm. me. Um, on the sidelines, I was working in a health food store, and I just got more and more drawn towards the natural side. Um, and why I wanted to go into that field again, there's a lot of health history in the family, so um, that just got me into getting into uh, doing nutrition, just deeper, deeper into more information about what's the cause, what's the re relations between the adrenals and the thyroid. Mm -hmm. um, everything has, you know, starts in the gut. Your gut is, as you said, the microphone, it's, it's just, it's your second brain or your mm -hmm. first brain, you can call it. So everything imbalanced is over there. I know everybody says, you know, you are what you eat, but I believe you are what you absorb. So if you aren't eating even the best type of foods, you're not absorbing it, you're not getting the full nutrition value from it. So I really want to go much more in depth into how it works and mm -hmm. hence I went into the live blood analysis as well to mm -hmm. see how uh, the tissues were working, how the body was working, absorbing 
and gives me a lot of uh, detailed information mm -hmm. in regards to the individual client. Yeah. And I want to talk more about thyroid and adrenals and this live blood testing that you do in a minute, but first I want to delve into the gut. So in your experience, what are some of the biggest enemies to our digestion in, in modern society? Stress. Stress. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Stress for sure. That's interesting because my first instinct would have been gluten or something that you eat, you know, something that you put into your body. Food is a stressor. Okay. Yes. People don't realize that. Food is a stressor. You have your environmental stress. You know, we have our relationships that we, it, be it you're with your parents, emotional your spouse, stress. your children, yep. your emotional stress, uh, the toxins that are out there, that's a stressor. The food you eat, that's a stressor. The state you're in when you eat, you can eat the healthiest food. But if, if you're on you the are go, stressed, run, 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 you're not digesting No, it. you're not yeah. absorbing, you're not digesting, you're, there's no benefit from that. You might as well just go get her bone broth and sip on something gentle because you're not, that steak is not doing you any good. That okay. veggie platter is not doing you any exactly. good. Exactly. You need mm -hmm. to be gentle with it because you're stressed. And your digestion, you're in fight or flight mode. Mm -hmm. You're ready to run from a tiger because you're stressed. Mm -hmm. Your body doesn't understand that it's so meant to have So the enzymes are not coming out, that's going to help you digest yeah, your food. So they're always doing other things. Uh, so it's very, very important that you have that state of mind. Even watching TV, that's stressful. So do not watch eating food, like watching TV and having food in front of it. Really? Do not yeah. multitask? No. Really? No. Oh. Concentrate on your food. At the, food is your medicine, everybody says, mm -hmm. right? So concentrate on that and just be at the same moment with it. And, it just gets absorbed better. Mm. It's a great way to change your state when you sit down to a meal. Mm -hmm. Just take a couple, five, as a staple, deep. Yeah. It changes your state. Almost from, like you're giving thanks. You absolutely yes. give thanks. Yeah. Absolutely. Dance while you chop your veggies. Yeah. You know, don't be angry at that. Like music playing you in know? the background. Yeah. 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 Like yes. dancing, like my kale salad. You'll, you'll notice your digestion improves just from that alone. If okay. that's the only thing you change, you'll see a difference. Okay, so take me through, step by step, the optimal digestive process. So I start by preparing my meal, mm -hmm. um, and I should be in a good mood when I'm chopping my veggies. I'm happy. I like to, before I sit down to my meal, I take my five deep breaths. Five deep breaths. I have my digestive tincture, okay. which is amazing. This one's a vodka base, so I mean, if you want to make a martini out of it, <laughs> go for it, have a little fun. You just take a dropper, which is one mil, full of this, and it has ingredients in it that are meant to aid in digestion. So this digestive production. tincture, I mean, is it comparable to, for example, um, drinking a glass of warm water with lemon in it? No, this would be more along the lines of uh, bitters. Okay, what are digestive bitters? Digestive bitters. Anything that is a bitter taste to it, anything okay. from, you know, bitter, like arugula, Dandelion the leaves, the the digestive. Yeah, so it gets the bile going from the gallbladder. It gets your uh, your liver kicking in. All of the systems that you need to support each other kind of come alive. It, yeah. yeah. So it, and it starts here in the mouth. You salivate when you smell lemon. Mm -hmm. That's your body's enzymes going. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay, in the salivatory glands, secreting them, and all of a sudden that process starts. So you have a little of this. You've got your deep breaths. Chew. Your food. Mm -hmm. We don't chew our food, and then and we don't wash don't it down water. with water. Don't no. drink right? water. You can't no, do that. Don't You're drink. You're washing your digestive enzymes away. Don't because drink water with your food. No, because no, enzymes really? start in the mouth. The minute you start with whether it's a smell mechanism or the actual first bite you take in there, the enzyme production happens inside the mouth. What is an enzyme? Um, enzymes are. Um, stuff that is going to help you break down your food. Okay. So there's different enzymes in the body. There's protease okay. that breaks down your proteins, you know. Does our body make that naturally? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Um, and because it's, you get so stressed sometimes, you start producing less and less, and that's where people start getting more and more digestive and issues. And as we get older, we also produce less. Okay. So you yes. need these enzymes, one for protein, one for dairy. For Each sugars, system. for carbohydrates, Absolutely. for yeah. everything. So enzymes are very, very important, and that's why the, um, the fermented turmeric also is a great digestive mm -hmm. aid. I put it on top of salads, on top of food, just a couple of sprays in the mouth. It's good for gut healing as well. Gut healing, very inflammation, good. pain. It's an amazing, amazing product. So does, should everybody take bitters and take digestive enzymes with their food? Um, almost everybody, yes. Uh, with the turmeric, you just have to be careful if you have gallstone issues or okay. ulcers. It can irritate you a little bit. Okay. Uh, other than that, most like, bitters you're, you're okay yeah. with. This one's good except for because it contains grapefruit and mm -hmm. the so wine as well. Yeah. And, and certain, certain medicines, medicines there's yes. contraindications, yeah. so you want to be aware of so that. So always talk to a 
knowledged practitioner. Yep. Okay. Before you do anything, just don't go pick up something because it worked for your friend because everybody's body chemistry is so unique. Of course. And you know, I get so many clients coming saying, oh, you know, this worked for my family. Mm. And I'm like, well, but you have these issues. Mm. But it worked for my family. But you're two different bodies. Of you're course. completely different people. So let's see what is going to work best for so you. So many cofactors yeah, that come into play. Okay, so I should be in a good mood when I'm preparing my meal. I should take some bitters beforehand, mm -hmm. some turmeric. Now, would you also take that before the meal? You can put it on top of salad put if you want. You can salad. do it okay. after the food to help okay. you digest better too. Okay. Um, there is so many different things you can do. Okay. Yeah. Make sure you're chewing the food. Very important. Are there 20 to 30 bites? It should be like baby food inside your mouth before yes, you swallow. Yes, absolutely. I think that takes a lot of discipline. I'm trying to it think does. about the last time I did that. Start with 10. ten and when bites. you find that that's too much, go to 5. Okay. And then go back up to 10. Yeah, exactly. Because we're so on the go-go all the time. Yeah. So we think, oh, we eat, swallow, gone. So a lot your of time jaw... people just eat it whole. <laughs> Not yeah, even breaking just... it down. So swallow. your jaw is working 20 to 30 times before you swallow. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow, I don't know anyone who does that. I mean, Not how many much longer do you want to do with finish me? <laughs> right. More and more clients. Yeah. yeah. As I mean, you yeah. educate them, you know, they do, do So that. how long should it take you to finish your lunch, for example, if you're chewing it, uh, appropriately? It really depends if it's a, you know, just a salad versus a protein. Right. You're going to definitely be chewing the protein a lot much longer. Yeah. yeah. Right? So um, As you chew your food as well, your body recognizes your system says, okay, I'm full, I'm satiated. Okay. So yes. you might find you're eating less because you're actually gaining the nutrients from the food you're eating instead of having right. it come down to your system and it's in your stomach and it's not the digestive process hasn't really started properly you've washed away your enzymes yeah. mm -hmm. your body's like oh my god i have all this this work to do and it can't and yeah. you know you end up it and goes it passes sugar through cravings. once you actually chew your food you will see you don't get that sugar craving either yeah. really? cuz a lot of times people take sugar right after a meal because i always feel like i'm not really full unless i have something sweet at the end of the meal do you meal. know why that is no so what sugar will do is help uh, bring out the bacteria that you have in your body. Okay. Okay, so the bacteria will help you break it down because the sugar molecules will break your food down and make you feel like you feel lighter, right? Okay. After you eat a meal, when yeah. you eat something sweet, you feel like you're lighter, but it's not the right way to do it, mm. right? It, it regulates blood sugar levels actually that way. Okay, okay, so what, what would be the right thing to do after I'm done my meal? You're done your meal. You're done your meal, okay. <laughs> and then do you... You can have water 15 yeah. minutes after that. 15 minutes So 15 after. to 20 minutes before or after is fine. So is it just water that you should avoid? Or I mean, can you have a glass of wine with your meal? You should try to avoid liquid, liquid. that's All washing liquids. away. You want to okay. just have your saliva in there doing its job. Okay. I realize that when we go out for dinner, we're going to have a glass of wine. Yes. And so, you know, as long as you're making sure that you chew your food and swallow it, Wait a little bit, have some conversation. Maybe then have tiny sips of your red wine, yeah. but don't do it every meal. Okay. And not big gulps, just yeah, small sips. Gulps. Yeah. And it, it is hard to do. So, you know, sustainability is very important. Mm. Many people who will do this, they will not do it for long term because they don't find it's easy. But once you get actually used to it, mm -hmm. slowly, slowly, they, they do get... Incorporate one thing at a time, yeah. and it's yeah. much easier. Okay. So we've talked about how we should eat our meal. What about the things that should or shouldn't be part of our meal in terms of enemies to our digestion? I know food combining. Food combining is huge. And okay. You want to make sure that if you're having a fat-soluble vitamin in your food, you that you have fat. Way. Yeah. Because so, it needs to have the fat. So a lot of times people will take vitamin D and they'll just put it in their water or take it with water. It's a fat soluble. You can't take it with water. Take it with avocado or nuts or anything fat based meal. Then the fat soluble vitamin will be absorbed to the body too. Even the turmeric. Yes. When you have, people think, okay, I have it with the pepper for absorption. Add fat in there, it goes up by 2,000%. Exactly. Wow. 2,000% yeah. more effective in absorption because you've added fat. Fat to it. So the fat I, soluble, I put mine with like coconut oil. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So in this instance, you mean food combining with vitamins and supplements? Just the food that you eat. I, I look at food, this is my medicine. I know that this section here contains my B vitamins and my this and my that. And I know that these ones are fat soluble, so I want to make sure I have some avocado or a, a specific type of oil because that's my fat that these vitamins in here need. I'm mm -hmm. combining certain things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have fruit 
half an hour before I eat my meal as opposed to after because it digests at a different rate. Mm -hmm. So think of fruit as an appetizer rather than Absolutely. a dessert. Exactly. Because it's Absolutely. sugar, it's going to burn in the body faster. Mm -hmm. Much faster. Get, yeah. Interesting. You're looking at 30 minutes as opposed to like an hour, and a, an hour and a half to two hours. Okay. So otherwise it sits in there and it ferments and it becomes rancid. Okay. You don't want that. Yeah. And that's where you get the issues as well with digestion. And the bacteria levels, candida, yeast oh, build up, yeah. everything. So you know that saying, life is short, eat dessert first? Is that kind of where it comes from? <laughs> oh. Maybe I just fruit, right? Too. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm, I'm sure, Darpan, that you know, as someone who owns and runs a, a gluten-free bakery, yes. that you probably think gluten is a big enemy to digestion. Uh, it can be for many people. Okay. There are some people who, if they don't have an issue, and their body's so complex, eating just white bread can be just fine for them because they're digesting it better. So it really depends <coughs> on the individual. But gluten is a, a great way um, to help with digestive again. If you're doing gluten-free, it'll help with inflammation. People who have um, um, uh, a lot of uh, bacteria built up, a lot of the breads are made with yeast, so that's mm -hmm. why my breads are made yeast-free. Okay. So you're not feeding more bacteria, more yeast, Okay. for it to go in the wrong way. Um, and everybody makes their um, gluten-free uh, in the market out there right now with rice. Right. Majority of them do it. Yes. And I do everything with either uh, fava beans, white beans, or uh, garbanzo. That's because it's got high protein, fiber, and iron. Mm -hmm. So even if you are not gluten-free or celiac, you're able to eat these baked goods because they're just nutritionally dense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you make the only gluten-free non-bread in town, is that right? In all of North America, yes. In all of North America, that's yes, amazing. That's right there. Now, mm -hmm. there's some, some traps that lie in following a gluten-free diet, like you said, you know, in, in getting uh, food that is high in, uh, high in fat, high in sugar, high levels of arsenic, you mentioned. Yes, uh, rice naturally is very high in arsenic levels. Uh, but people are just overdoing it more and more because that's their only alternative. And everybody uses rice to mm -hmm. make all their um, uh, baked goods, whether it's bread or desserts. So everything I make is um, is made with beans, whether it's a dessert, black forest cake, carrot cake, mm. um, donuts, uh, naan bread, breakfast rounds, uh, yeast-free breads. Everything's nutritionally dense. Mm -hmm. Or and people with the corn, right? And they've switched, exactly. and that's, oh my God. Because a lot of corn is genetically modified. It is, so we do that. use some corn in there, which is made by uh, one of the companies in the US. It's non-GMO, organic mm -hmm. uh, corn starch, mm -hmm. uh, because without the starches, you can't hold. Mm -hmm. So we do use arrowroot, we use tapioca, we have a little bit of corn starch in there too. Majority of my clients who have corn issues as well, haven't had an issue with the breads that we make. Mm, that's great. Now, if you're someone who can't handle something with gluten in North America, could you conceivably go to Italy, for example, and eat non-genetically modified pasta and be okay with it? I've heard stories like I that. I have heard. I haven't oh. been there, so I can't. I have a girlfriend who, I have two girlfriends actually. One went to Italy and she said, I can eat things yeah. that I can't eat in Canada. And then I have another girlfriend, you, we, you know who I'm Just, talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And celiac, no. no different ball game. Okay. You're celiac, you're celiac. It, yeah. That's Doesn't matter. just the way it's going to be. Stay away from it. There is differences in the countries how they process exactly. the food, and over right? Exactly. They make everything fresh. Yeah. So there, you, I've seen that's so many people go and come back, you know, I can go home, I can eat my pasta, I come back here to Canada, oh, I can't have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's okay. what it is. It's the processing. What's your take on probiotics and prebiotics? I'm big on them. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I believe that most people need to re-inoculate and once you do, you don't necessarily need to be on probiotics all the time. Mm -hmm. That is my school of thought. There are two schools of thought and you know what, both work. You do what works best for you. I've seen many people that are yeah. on them at all times and it works really well yeah. and others that they can re-inoculate, they can take a break and then you have prebiotic foods. You want to re-inoculate before you introduce the prebiotic foods mm -hmm. because you want to make sure you're feeding the healthy bacteria and nothing else. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's your fiber, that's celery. These are prebiotics. Mm, interesting. It's so what feeds the probiotic. You're more into natural yeah, sources. So in food, yeah, so in food grade, you can do kombucha. You can do uh, sauerkraut, oh, yes. uh, sourdough Fermented pasta. Veggies. All these are prebiotics. Yeah. You still need the supplement, though. I, yeah. I believe firmly it's great to have functional foods. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, the sauerkraut, it's a functional food, yeah. but you need that probiotic supplement. And mm -hmm. you need to make sure you're getting one where it keeps the strain separate mm -hmm. because they are combative. They will attack each other. Yeah, right? mm -hmm. yeah. so That's you take your prebiotics do. first. And then you take your probiotics because once the prebiotics is there, the probiotics will work. So it's like 
having uh, lighting a, a fire to a gas without the gas it won't mm. lit interesting so analogy. it's like that yeah mm -hmm. we're just about to head to break but i want to hear sure. more about your take on these things and as well as some of the conditions you can develop when your digestion is off like uh, leaky gut and SIBO and of course thyroid adrenals and testing so don't go away when we come back from the break all you want to know about gut healing and digestion and optimizing your energy levels we'll be right back <laughs> 